and review what we've done. Without going too much into the code, the code is on GitHub. I'll show you the link to the pull request. We've reorganized our subscribe form so it just has essential fields. We have a hard coded list of subscription options with their corresponding price. A toggle for whether or not it's recurring. We're not currently handling that, but I will set up um, a way to tell Braintree that the subscription is not recurring. Let me make note of that real quick. We're going to go through this code a little bit more. Cool. Yeah. So this is the bread and butter. This is what we're really after, though. Previously, we were using Braintree transactions to make one-off subscriptions um, of up to three years in duration, but it's just a, a single transaction. It's not going to come around again unless the person goes back to the site and runs that transaction. With recurring subscriptions, we have a little higher likelihood of, uh, or, or at least we can reduce uh, subscriber churn. Western Friends a nonprofit, uh, so subscriptions and revenue is just, uh, exceptionally important. important. Um, so once they fill in their subscription details, a, a subscription instance is actually saved on the server and it just basically expires immediately. Um, the change today was what happens when you submit the card. Now Braintree automatically generates this card input form through your drop in JavaScript. So this is just a regular wagtail page. Uh, or, which wires this posts to essentially a Django view. And uh, let's just read through that real quick. So the payment process looks for a, the method being a post. And that little brain tree JavaScript, it encrypts the um, card information, sends it to brain tree and you get a, a little token back from brain tree. And so what we're gonna do is use that a token in a moment, but first we're going to create a connection to the Braintree Sandbox Gateway uh, environment with our merchant ID and public and private keys. And when you're creating a subscription, it's a little different than a one-off transaction. You have to create a customer instance so that you can actually store their information and their credit card information in a secure vault. Uh, so Braintree still knows about that credit card information on their server, and we would just create a, a, a customer and link that customer to the credit card information. Braintree will handle that securely. So if that's a, if we're able to create the customer, um, we're then gonna create a subscription instance. And essentially, now the customer's payment information is stored in their customer profile vault. And we only have one plan, it's hard coded for now, um, so it's a little brittle, but essentially we don't wanna add another plan because when you create a subscription instance, you're actually able to override some of the properties. So even though we have, I think, eight or so different subscription options, um, we're calculating the cost on the server uh, in a way, just returning the amount. Previously, there was a little bit more going on with discounts, but I, I cleaned up that code in a way uh, to keep things simple. Uh, and that's it. Once you send this to the gateway, we're going to check in if it's successful. I need to put in some logging. Uh, for the failures so we can debug those but uh, we mark it as paid I think this is a little redundant at this point the entities relating uh, by the way referring to the original subscription so uh, this payment processing form comes uh, takes people from two different paths from both the bookstore and the subscribe page so when we're coming in from either one we're going to grab an entity from the respective collection or table essentially uh, if they're coming from the bookstores, we're going to look up a bookstore order. If they're coming from the subscription page, we're going to look up a subscription. So we just refer to that as an entity. So down here, we're going to change some properties on there. Uh, we're going to store a reference to the Braintree subscription ID so that we can cross-reference those, look it up, and run other administrative actions. And then we're going to push out that end date by one year because we know that every subscription, even if it doesn't recur, uh, our default is subscription length of one year. 
And essentially we save that and clear out the session variable that allowed us to look up the subscription. All this code's on GitHub, so it's prone to change. There will be some improvements, but I'm doing my best to keep it well documented and we're open source. So if you are looking at a similar challenge of wanting recurring subscriptions on your uh, site, feel free to check out how we're doing it and modify it to your needs. Uh, basically when the form is rendered though, if it's not a post, if we're not getting data from the form being submitted, we're gonna render the payment processing form and pass in a client token that Braintree generates based on our authentication credentials uh, and just render the payment in the form for transparency to the end user. Again, all this uh, code is on GitHub. And uh, there's just a few follow-up tasks. I'm gonna be working on uh, a couple of refactoring things. And basically, based on Mary's feedback we meet tomorrow, uh, if we're a green light with this approach, I'll just add a way for people to manage their subscriptions through the Western Friend website, because Braintree does not offer that. Uh, whereas something like PayPal would let people manage and cancel their subscriptions or update their credit card information on the PayPal website. We will need to design those. Uh, so allowing customers to update their information and do other actions than uh, create subscriptions. Those are all documented on the Braintree website. Okay, well, that's a brief summary of today's Code Buddies Live Code Hangout. Appreciate everybody for stopping by on Twitch. Who did? It's always nice to have company. Cyber Guy Rich, it was good seeing you again. I'm talking about uh, satellite and over the horizon communications. Imperium, it was good to see you. And thank you for helping me debug the audio on both uh, Imperium 42 and Rich helped me debug the audio on the stream. It was a little bit static yet. My OBS configuration wrong. All right, if you'd like to get involved with this or other open source projects, or just generally learn um, and help others learn to be uh, better developers. Stop by codebuddies.org. It's a very active community. There's a lot of uh, interesting groups forming of exploring various technologies, JavaScript, Python, Django, React, Java, you name it. There's uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning groups going on. Codebuddies.org is also an open source project. You can Get involved with the next generation of CodeBuddies.org platform at github.com slash CodeBuddies. Well, that's been it. It's been a good uh, and productive live coding session today. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing well out there and see you around.